Hello, today we are looking at a Bluetooth speaker, the overall flowchart on this project, which we have just started, and we are looking to further develop on to what's the basics, what do we need to do. How do we build one, essentially? I've never built one myself, so this will be an interesting one. I'm doing this with a fellow engineer who's over in America. Well, anyway, coming into this Bluetooth speaker, what do we need to do? So with every project, like I've mentioned previously in the channel, you got to start off with your flowchart. How is this thing going to function? What is it going to do? You get a base idea. After this base idea, you need to further dive into it. So once you've chosen your certain component, what is the overall functionality of this going to do? A lot of this was just a lot of writing. What do we need to do? Some key information, uh, some things that we've like just discussed about. So little things, what are we going to use? What microcontroller are we going to do? What all like the audio, how, what? what size of load we're driving and whatever can we work backwards from it what what is our ideal output of our speaker these are the things that we are kind of looking forward to so we split this up into different parts so other partner will do the power section i'm going to do the audio section and this is what i think we're going to combine these two together have a look at what each other's work and so on what you need to keep in mind of is when you select an MCU of sort is to get it into comfortable with it don't just jump straight into it test it see if you can do some basic functionalities whatever with it so we looked into a uh, different MCUs we originally thought STM32 would do the trick and because there are some Bluetooth STM32s but they didn't have I2S and I2S is it's kind of like this audio protocol not I2C don't get confused but it's this, it's this audio protocol specifically made for this I believe don't quote me on this and this was something we were going to do so we're going to use that feed into a into a DAC and then into an audio amplifier so we selected this we selected the amplifier I think we were discussing the STM 32 WB 15 but I've settled on this microcontroller here I have a dev board for it which I'm going to show you later uh, just showing a simple blink program on how to program it so we have this communication going on we have the power what do we need speakers amplifier so I'm trying to keep everything as transparent, even though this is not the best way to do it. I think it's still start. Ideally, maybe we had some kind of document to further elaborate. But I think just for initial like throwing ideas here and there, this is totally fine. Some key parameters that we want some some prices that you know we want to keep it under and things because price is a big one. We're all not made of money, but generally to make these there's tons of Bluetooth speaker projects, so there's tons of reference designs out there. But generally, it's the Bluetooth. You know, you've got a DAC and an audio amplifier to your speaker. That is the general gist of it. Coming into the ESP32, the well, the IDE, I'm using the IDF or whatever. I'm using VS Code with the ESP32 IDF plugin. So I've installed that here. This is this one here. And I am running, I've opened up the Blink example. And you think, oh, just example, like why would you do such a thing? Like that's so simple and things. Well, I think it. the examples are really such a key driver into how you learn and how you develop yourself there's just so much information here that you could just reverse engineer so okay so there's probably loads of documentation out here i'll make another video on this into what what actually goes into these examples like how do i learn from them because it's quite daunting at first i found it quite daunting to be honest so we set this up we've got our example here what do we need to do first it's not like the arduino thing it's it's quite, I found it a bit difficult. What you're going to do is you're going to need to build the project. So I think as in the Arduino IDE or whatever. So you have these different things here. You can all select them. Oh, if I accidentally click full clean. Oh, anyway, build project. Start building now. Right. So that is done there. Uh, it seems we have, we've had no issues. And if you're ever so curious about the size analysis you can click f1 and what you're going to type in is esp dash spell idf dash and you agree with all these different functions here and this is where a majority of things you can just configure from here it's great size analysis of the binaries so you're going to click that it's going to tell you the size of it and i think it's quite useful into i think how big something is in how much space maybe you've got uh but to me this is all jargon <laughs> at the moment i don't really care i think to someone more experienced than myself this would be maybe important but but anyway so now we're going to flash the project but to do that first we need to select the port to use so again f1 we're going to type in esp idf 
I've put ESO, ESC, RDF, and I select port to use. So it'll show you available ports and I guess if you just have one device plugged in, that's your thing. And we want to plug in this blink example here. Okay, and now we're just gonna flash it. So again, again, you can probably set hotkeys here. So like there's a few here, uh, what they all are. So you can probably set that. And I would probably, if you haven't selected it, I would select the flash method to be of choice. So for this, I've got UART. I'm just gonna click flash device. So you probably saw there's different, there's different methods, but you just select the one of your choice. We can also monitor the device to see if we had a new terminal or something. I'm not sure if it says in this code, does it say anything? So here, so this is a part if we had to monitor, there's a bit of, there's a bit of logging going on here which will tell us uh, what's the state of the LED. And if there's something like this, I'm sure we can all implement it somehow. If we press, press that and if you did have another example or whatever just esp dash idf again f1 monitor your device it's gonna go in and there you go so the led is turning off and turning on and i'm doing this i did this whole entire example to that i'm able to program this device it is fine and it's a good way to just get into it and test certain things so right now i was testing the onboard rgb led but as we get more into the device, if I say I want to use a GPIO pin and whatever, I'll test that specific GPIO pin with a red LED or something, just some visual indication to showcase how is this working, how is this going on. Coming to the end, if you do not know how to install this Visual Studio Code, I'll put a link in the description to help you how to go out with all of this. It's fairly straightforward. And moving on. So that is one part we know that the ESP32 is okay. It's okay to work. You know, I've programmed a test example on it, which is fine. The next step is to test the hardware. So it's to actually buy the breakout boards, which I'll make another video on, on to what, why I've chosen these, what am I going to do to them, how I'm going to configure them.